Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our session of Carnival of Poetry. Our theme for today is Mental Health Awareness, Words Heal the Mind. Our featured poets for today are the winners and the judge of our first poetry writing competition in collaboration with Singapore Red Cross. The poetry writing competition aims to raise awareness on the importance of mental health, especially among migrants. This collaboration between migrant writers of Singapore and Singapore Red Cross became an avenue for migrant worker poets to express their different emotions. Please join us on this day to listen to the reading poems that will bring different messages which will truly touch your heart. Our first prize winner is from South Cotabato, Philippines. She has been working in Singapore since 2016. She found refuge in writing, is the agony of missing home. At the same time, found her passion. Her poem Affirmation was published in an anthology by the Tiger Mott Review, Echo Journal recently. Let us welcome our first prize winner, Miss Doralyn Montal. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, migrant writers of Singapore and all the viewers, my fellow poets. So Today, I'm going to recite my poem entitled, The Pen is My Witness. The pen is my witness. I was hunted by the situation, the present. Serene, rush, screaming to save lives. Broadcast with dead bodies, enemies unseen, halted everything. Cries were louder than laughter. In a minute, I might be dead too. I am afraid. Darkness blanketed my vision, my mind turmoiled. My heart races down my spine even faster than time, gasping a breath and hopeful. I drifted into dark hollows, annoying indistinct sound drummed into my ears like the howl of the fox on the blood moon. Fear shed like a river. This fear caused a jingle jungle in my mind. It struck straight into my heart and exploded into my brain like a chemical weapon, tearing every beat of my consciousness. This disturbance is a complete poison to my tranquility. I held my hands crossed wrapped it around my body, hugging every bit of my emotion. I am here, distracted, listening to my own breathing. But somehow in the midst of this turbulence, a fulgent light appeared in the dark. And that's when I realized there is no one there to save me except me. These hollows were just made by my own mind and I hold the control. I gathered my strength and grasped that light. I let my pen bleed in an empty paper. Words, cries, all my worries, my pain, my agony and all. And slowly, bit by bit, the darkness that once blanketed my vision buried in silence and the paper that's once empty now speak and overcoming and the witness is my pen thank you so much thank you so much Jara. that was very emotional for i think everybody can relate to the poem like what's happening right now is really a poison in our tranquility that's what you said can you Tell me more about this poem. How does this poem come up? Pardon? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. 
because it's sorry i'm sorry pardon can you tell me more about this can you tell us more about this poem uh, what's your uh, this poem uh this poem is just an expression of what i feel because especially today that we're, we're in this covid situation and the world is going crazy and we are isolated into our own uh, like during the lockdown we are uh, everything halted by this this uh, COVID-19 and we don't have any choice just to to stay uh, stay isol isolated and uh, so and uh, yeah, I just speak what's inside my mind, what the fear, the fear, the, the longing, the agony that I feel. And it's very scary. And then uh, I just collected all this, this thought and uh, write it as a poem. And so that's, that's all, all it started. And I hope I have able to express I, I know everybody can can also um, relate into this this poem. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, can I ask you like any message or any message to our fellow migrants? Everybody that is now. I know everybody is suffering. What we are. What's happening right now? So any message that you can share? How are we going to take care of our mental health? So everyone, I know that sometimes you feel scared or uh, you feel very, uh, you feel that everything is going messy this time. But I just want you to know that uh, uh, anybody, uh, there is someone there who is willing to listen to you and if we just uh, speak up everyone is willing to listen to you. There, I, I just want to let everyone know that whatever the situation is, whatever how hard it is today we will get through this and then we just need to embrace or accept it and we just need to open up to someone so so we can we can uh, our feeling will become uh, I mean we, we will feel the light light feeling inside us because especially today that um, every one of us also is feeling the same and we have to to ensure that everything we say or we have to encourage ourselves to to speak all sort of kindness and be able uh, must always put ourselves into other people's feet of, also so we'll be able to to we will be able to help them or we we can be a help to them in order to cope with the situation and everyone please take care of your mental health and i i i'm i'm just here also i am willing to listen you can reach out to me so thank you so much and I would like to acknowledge also, also the effort of our judges and migrant writers of Singapore, the Red Cross, everyone behind this event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jola. And once again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll get back to you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Our next poet was born in... Dhaka, Bangladesh. He first came to Singapore in 2007, where he currently works in the construction sector. He primarily writes sonnets, but has also written short stories and nonfiction. He was a speaker at the Singapore Writers Festival. He was runner up in an inaugural migrant worker poetry competition in Singapore in 2015 and his poems and articles have appeared in journals and anthologies in Singapore. Let us welcome our second prize winner, Mr. Mohar Khan.
Hi, brother. Mahar. Are you there? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I was staying at home at circuit breaker in Singapore last year. Then I make a stay-at-home poem by capturing my feeling. Actually, the message given in this poem is to stay in health protection. Interesting thing, today, I am under stay at home for sick. Now, I'm going to recite my poem, stay at home. For an unseen quiz, Sabastad, we distrust his other, we, be, we become inanimate, as lifeless as the object around us like a step on the staircase. The lip button, the bus railing, the coin in the pocket. Through the hour, wall is the jail to us. In this jail room, I listlessly turn the pages of a book and fall asleep without realizing. Portion pain in the chicken remain unruly, irregularly, but time. Work suspension period is uncertain. The body is in need of a deep restful sleep. In sleep, the poet calls me, praying, come away to dreamland. Would you take me across seas in the bullet boat to a new island? I have never been sitting on the island ship. The night is young, will gauging at full moon. I am writing a poem. Suddenly, a distinct voice yells, don't go out, it's at home, time is not favorable. And answer who is around. They are tempting you. I woke up with the hesitation, swing between belief and disbelief, not knowing what is real and what is unreal. As the countless days drag on, the unseen who is runs into the poor worker, temp tempting me. It called me into a 52-seat public bus. It also called me for a city tour. I reply in negative. I said, I, I will stay at home. It calls me from the park swing. When I peek through the window, I said, no, I will stay at home. On a silent day now, desolate most of a cat, a gang of otters were freely enjoying the rain. How? I was tempted with a phone call. Come out and see them play. I told, no, I will stay at home. For me across my home, fresh air call me. From the green trees, branches, a bird also calls me. Controlling myself, I told them, no, I will stay at home. Sometimes the unseen priest presses the doorbell and calls me pretending to be a guest delivery man, a volunteer or social worker, maintaining my physical distance. I tell them, no, I will stay at home. 
I will stay at home. I will stay at home. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother, for the very emotional poem. I think right now, the safest place at home, staying at home. And I wish you get well soon, brother Mohar Khan. And yeah, just like what you said, right now, stay at home. Thank you so much and congratulations for being our second prize winner. Now, our next poet is a 33 years old and a domestic worker from Philippines. She has worked in Singapore for eight years. Her son is now nine years old. She counts on the support of her life partner. She is also a team leader of nonprofit organization of lifters and a member of Migrant Writers of Singapore. Let us welcome our third prize winner, Miss Julianne Sabigne. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. And before I would like, I will uh, recite my poem. I would like to take this opportunity to give my sincere gratitude to my grant writers of Singapore, headed by Brother Sakir, and to Singapore Red Cross for organizing this competition, Words Heal the World, and also to all um, three judges who judge fairly and. Thank you so much. And also to COP team for bringing many different poets all over the world to enjoy um, different poetry and learn something from them. So um, I will recite my poem and the title of my poem is Break Free. And here it goes. I felt slowly eaten by a beast a monstrous, invisible being resides inside my body. That every time I try to fight back, she erect the highest wall of disobedience. Manipulations took over. It overwhelmed me. I can function normally, heard some noises. I can't figure it out. Where are they coming from? I'm shaking. It's poisoning me, making me feel tired, weak, and restless. I want to break free, unchain me, fate. Fate brought me to reality, my illusions, the mirror of my dark isolations slowly broke. At first, it was difficult. It took me some time to get used to it. I find myself busy and be productive. I knelt down and pray as enemies started to attack me. It became a habit to divert things when things get out of control. So far, I can barely manage myself not to get so attached. I learned to love myself with or without prejudices and to detach my emotions to those who made me feel unwanted and unloved. Life is unplanned adventure, full of things is beyond control and imaginations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miss Julie. Life is beyond our control. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Can you, can you uh, tell us more about this poem? How did you come up with this poem? Mm, I wrote this poem just to compile my emotions, what I've been through last 2018. Every one of us tested in many different ways. But if this woman surpassed the hardships, and I know you can too, and you will. I made it, you also made it. I wrote this poem as an encouragement to everyone, not only women, to all 
anyone who is suffering right now and to all anyone who is like going through hardships, those hurdles of life and those problems, of course, never, um, we, we cannot avoid that, but we can all make it. Just trust yourself and this too shall pass. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sis Julie. I'll get back to you later. Our next poet is from the Philippines. He has been in Singapore for four fruitful years working as domestic helper. Poetry gives her a space to comprehend in her own space. Writing and poetry slowly becomes her outlet to express her emotion, where she can only imagine what's on her mind and how she could convey what she wanted to tell in this space that became possible to be heard and read. And this helper helped her to straighten emotional and mental stability, being away from her homeland and family. Let us welcome one of our consolation prize winners, Miss Heidi Royles. Heidi, are you there? Hi, good afternoon, Heidi. We cannot hear you. Unmute yourself. Heidi. Heidi, try again. Can you please stop? See whether we can hear you. Hi, Heidi. Maybe we will get back to you later once you settle your mobile or your phone. I think we have to go to our next poet for now. Our next poet has been working as a domestic worker here in Singapore for 25 years. That was so long. She volunteers with home. She loves writing poems. She is one of the writers in Our Home Sour Stories and a contributor and one of the editors of Call and Response. Let us welcome our Constellation Prize winners, Rubina Nabato. Hello. Hi, Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes. Good afternoon, this everyone. Us. Yeah. Thank you all for uh, watching us here at Carnival of Poetry. So here's my poem. Hear me. My suffering is still unknown. No one can see me. I'm on my own. Face marked with fear without realizing it, no matter how I pretend that I am not beat. Forbidden to communicate to the people I love, I wait for seven days, three hours is all I have. Innocent voices I yearn to hear. I want the time to stop, wishing they were near. I start before sunrise and ends at midnight, Chores are infinite, it does not seem right. Eyes everywhere, I get poked when I see it. Filthy words echoed, slashy her spit. Exhausted, I'm exhausted. My whole being seems wasted. Nothing that I do is pleasant to their eyes. I am the weakest link 
not in their ties. I dug up a hole, place in my head, place my head inside. Darkness comforts me in shivering nights. Whispers that invites me to the edge is high, but hope sparks when I open my eyes. I tried to reach out to others to let them know, yet blank stares tells me, just go with the flow. They listen with their eyes, not with their ears. Words they tell me, it brought me to tears. Life is hard for some of us here. Difficulties to others, abuse are severe. We need a heart who listens and empathizes to hold my hand and hear my cries. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Rubina, and congratulations once again. Thank you, Rhea. Uh, I'm sure just now you mentioned they listen with their eyes and not with their ears. Can you tell us more about this? Okay. Um, this one really, um, I still remember the moment I write, when I wrote this, um, this words, uh, that's when I was talking to my friends and telling them what I'm going through. And it seems like all of them were in front of me and listening to me, but I, I cannot feel their sympathy. I cannot feel that, you know, that they're listening to me because after what I've told them, but because I was trying really hard to make them feel my situation, but at the end, they will tell me that, you know, all of us are having the same situation. Mine is worse, mine is worse. So it was like, you know, in my mind that time, it was all about me. It's not about you. I was the one who's telling you this, these things and I want you to help me. But, but what happened is that, you know, you need a job, just go with the flow, you know? So those are the things that, you know, that really frightens me because at that time I felt that no one's listening to me. Yeah, that's when, that's the time when I felt that um, there's something wrong already because uh, I don't want to talk to my friends because I thought they were not listening. You know, I, um, it's very seldom for me to talk to my mom and tell my problems, but that time I, I just keep talking to her. Thank you so much. I feel you. Uh, if you can share any message to our fellow migrants or to everybody that was sorry, before, sorry can again. You share, can you share any message uh, for our fellow migrants or for everybody? Because right now, what's happening in Singapore is. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, for my fellow migrants who's watching right now, who's listening to us right now, I know um, this situation is really, um, is not easy for both domestic workers, especially, and to employers too. And um, I know... Um, a lot of us are struggling. I mean, I experienced that myself firsthand uh, because I've been with help desk for a very long time. And it, it seems like there, were, there are more calls now than before. And actually this poem is all about different, it's not only about me, but it's all about different experiences of domestic workers who came to me for advices. And I just want you to know that um, uh, if you, if it happens that you, you experience this type of like, you know, you're stressed out, you're depressed, just try to talk to someone, you know, choose the person, the one that you really trust and talk to them, tell them that you really need help. And, um, or you can call me because I'm always ready to listen to you. And yeah, I, I'm here to help. I think for, for each one of us, let's be a friend to others. Let's be a friend to our friends. You know, let's have, you know, land our shoulders for them to cry on and just keep listening to them. Thank you so That's much all. for that beautiful message. Thank you. And Thank you. I'll get back to you later. Thank you. Our next poet was born in the village part of Philippines in the month of July, 1984. 
she graduated bachelor, bachelor of Elementary Education and was a public school teacher for nine years. Ako na, Bang Marinig, guys. Time, teaching in the year 2016 and come to Singapore to seek a greener pasture. She had gained a certain ako ako. 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 at the age of learning ako. 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 and currently working as a nanny. She is a member of Carnival of Poetry and performs in some events like the Singapore Youth Festival. She is currently working to her poem collection and wishes to publish it one day to inspire and motivate others. She loves reading books, doing arts, and writing poems. Let us welcome Miss Medina Calmarin Balsado. Hello, everyone. Hello, co poets. Okay, my poem. I will gonna read my poem now. A secret killer. I want to avoid the sadness I feel, but it keeps chasing me and silently kill. I can't stop myself from smiling. The deep down my soul, I am crying. Oh my, I'm so depressed. The feeling I can't suppress. I want to hide in a silent place where I can scream my feelings and have peace. I smile, I laugh, I giggled, but within myself, I am being trembled. How I wish I could take away this feeling. It makes me feel I'm dying. The voices I hear are rampant. It curses and it's like a runt. Whispering the feeling of being guilty, it triggers my mind into anxiety. Every night I struggle to sleep. My brain keeps awake, but it needs to rest in a silent sleep. Where noises and chaos have no place to peep. A peaceful corner where I want my, play, my brain to deep. I'm making a world of fantasy, withdrawing it from reality. Having an inside war, struggling an issue, but it's blood. A feeling of emptiness inside, being left out at nobody's by my side. Walking alone in the midst of crowd. No one heard my screaming agony that is so loud. In this life still worth to live, or I just wanted to live. A saddest wave of goodbye put me into so much cry. I want to end this worthless breath. It, it only offers me pain and death. Should I hold on or let go? I am lost. I can't find my way back. I am being murdered thrice, not twice, with my own mind and loneliness. How can I be saved from droning? It's a daytime nightmare that won't leave me. Leave me without nothing to hold on. It's dark and getting darker. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Medina. And I just want to tell you that um, this life is still worth to live. Yeah. This is this holding on and never let go. Because right now, maybe just what you said that uh, it's getting darker. But remember, after the rain, there's always a rain. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, would you like to give any message to our fellow migrants? Like, how are they going to better their mental health? Um, all I can say is. I know this time is very sad and we need to be positive in in some in on all in everything and of course after the heavy rain there's always a rainbow so and there's always a beautiful tone waiting for everyone of us that's right thank you so much for that message. thank you i'll get back to you later Okay, thank you. Okay, our next poet is born in Sambales, a single mother of five, currently working as foreign domestic worker in Singapore. She became a finalist 
in Migrant Poetry Writing Contest in year 2017 and 2019. She contributed some of her poems in various books and ebooks in Philippines, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Let us welcome one of our consolation prize, Miss Oliberti Melado. Hi, sis. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. The stage is yours. Okay. Um, I will recite my poem, Paranoia. Can, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You can, yes. Okay. Paranoia. Back to my old self. Back to the same routine with my rusty minds and callous hands. Writing at one place to another and then checking it back and forth. As the usual day passes, I end up doing nothing. Aside from looking at the ceiling, imagining things, figures, and places. Eventually ending all up with a question. When does this chaos inside me will end? Isn't it ironic that I am doing things when I am even afraid of my own shadow? It's a shackle that will bind me even after my death. And I don't want to be in a place where people will throw their mocking and stare at, stares at me. It is an inhibited feeling that arouses my devious side. Yet like the waves, it's calming at the same time. Looking back at the time when I allowed myself to openly blend with the crowds, soon after that, I felt being stabbed, wounded, and played. I became a victim that turned into a villain when I blatantly defended myself from being bullied. From then on, I chose to live in silence, build my own world, trusting no one, not even myself. Thank you. Thank you so much. Trusting no one, even yourself. That was so heavy. <laughs> and just how you mentioned, like, what makes you afraid of your own shadow? Uh, actually, the one this actually this one the the poem that I've written this paranoia is actually a process for me of healing, self healing. When you uh during this pandemic, when you when you feel you're you're all alone, and then you you have no one to tell what what's going on inside your your mind. Uh, for me, being alone is a process of healing. So I keep uh, thinking of things, what to do. Um, uh, the one that I said, uh, I'm afraid of my own shadow. It's it's like you're willing to le willing to help, willing to lend a helping hand, but then in return, as a not not just expecting that someone will always listen for you, right? So. So at the end of the at the end of the poem that I write, it's trusting no one, not even myself. It's actually going through the process of uh, being at the bottom of yourself, pulling yourself up. Yes. It's like Thank that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Thank um, you. Would you like to give any message to our fellow migrants on how are they going to take care of their mental health? Um, to our fellow migrant, uh, it's okay to feel not okay at times. There, but but then make sure that you have to divert your feelings, your emotions. Uh, like us, we do right. We do right. You can just grab a pen and the paper, then just express what you what you feel. Don't uh, keep everything inside. You just let it all out. If you need a helping hand, if you need someone to listen to you, you can just uh, reach out to a friend. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your message. Thank you also. Thank you. And our next poet 
is safe somehow, but unfortunately, I received a message from him that he's actually working today and he's trying to join us. Earlier, earlier he was here, but I think he, he's out now because of work. So maybe I should read his poem to let you all hear. By the way, Saif Tamal came from Bangladesh. He has been working at a shipyard in Singapore for 11 years. He started writing in 2004 after being attracted to literature and creativity. Basically, he writes short stories, essays, and poems. In 2014, his solo poetry book was published. Congratulations, Brother Saif Tamal. And for you, I am going to read your poem. His poem titled Coffin Box. Mom, I haven't had time to come yet. This city did not free me from captivity. captivity. Every day I suffer in hell inside the dormitory. Morning and evening, I am burning like a fire of endless snow. I remember my father's face again and again. The smell of my father's hardworking body is the inspiration for my survival. From the mirror of memory at noon, I take out my father's shadow and feel the coolness. You believe, mom, in dormitory captivity for a year and a half for fear of the virus, my life expectancy has decreased by 10 years. Every limb of the body is in pain, standing under the open sky for a long time. I don't see goodbye in the late afternoon, day after day to be imprisoned in the dormitory, going to be exhausted and mental anguish. I was stunned by the pinch of my body. Is this my body or a piece of stone? I am stoned to death in captivity. My love has died, mother. In the middle of the night, I see the stars in the sky. I hear the faces all of you. If the city is liberated, I'll be back now. Foggy winter morning to see the dewy smile on the green grass, I will be back. Wet in the rain of red clouds like disobedient childhood, with the fragrance of flowers on a white spring morning, or wrapped in a coffin box like a falling flower, I will be back. Mom, I ended up burning and mental anguish. When it becomes a shadow like a father, don't be afraid, Mom. Until then, you to learn to be stoned. This poem was really so emotional. I didn't see that coming. That that line or wrap in a coffin box like a falling flower. I didn't see that coming. I was so shocked when I when I read that. But brother, I don't want to see you go back wrap in a coffin box. I want. I want. I would like to see you go back alive and keep you. Please take care, brother Saifama, and thank you for being one of our Constellation Prize winner. It was really, I'm so touched with this poem. Okay. Is Miss Heidi now here? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Okay. The stage is yours. Okay. I'm Oh, sorry, sorry for, for the inconvenience. So, in commemoration of World's Mental Health Day and Awareness, I humbly present my share of reminders that turn into beautiful words. And thank you so much, migrant writers of Singapore, 
for giving me this chance this afternoon. And my gratitude goes to Singapore Red Cross for having this opportunity for us to pin down our masterpiece and layers for everyone. You matters and you are important. Reflections. I can hear you even on your silent hush tone. It was like an echo in my ear. I hear your cries piercing like an arrow in my heart. I hear you panting, gasping every breath. I hear those angry screams you've been keeping inside. You have been bottling it up as much as you can. I can even hear the rustling, the noises when you flip the pages of your favorite book. I heard it when you curse the time, whenever the tick of the clock move, you stare on it angrily as if a monster hanging on that wall that tells you it's time. It's time to get up. It's time to get up. I choose to be deep and blind because whenever I see you this way, I will break down completely. And who will be there for you? I am here. I am here, just right here, watching you, watching you droning in your uncertainties. You breathe, breathe, and snap it out. I am at one corner, extending you my everything, trying to touch you, trying to reach out to comfort you. But You've seen me very often or nothing at all, never at all. All the time you forget, you forget to even peep me, to remind yourself how years faded, drawn your images. Be gentle, flow like streams, do not let it dry up. Do not close your eyes. Do not close your eyes. Look at me. Look at me closer. There are spiders web, but you see, it will redirect you to the roots. There are lots of loops and tangles, yet you see, these are still connections. Look after yourself as I'm trying to reach out to you in your silence when no one, when no one else notice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Heidi. At last, you can hear you already heard your poem. Yeah. yeah. Can you share more about this poem? How did you come up with this poem? Or what's the inspiration behind it? Mm, not much. This is just like my pinned up emotions that I kept. And in the night, when I'm done with all the work, I have to sit down and there is a mirror right opposite. And I am looking at it and I'm talking to it. And that very night, like, I have no one to talk. And then I have no friends to to reach out, I feel like at midnight, I am alone. So I just get up and look at the mirror and talk to it. And then I realize I look like crazy. So I better write it. If you face the mirror right now, what one word would you tell yourself? Be gentle, flow like waters. Thank you so much, Heidi. Okay, our next poet for this afternoon 
He is one of the respected judges during the poetry writing competition. And we are so honored to have him this afternoon to share his poems and give an inspirational message to all of us. Please let us welcome Mr. Theopolis Quick. Hi, hi everyone. Um, I just want hi, to start Theo, off. Hi, hi. Yes. Uh, this stage is yours. Thank, thank you, you so much for being with us. Yeah, and thank you everyone for reading. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying congratulations to all the winners. Um, it was very exciting for us because when we judge, we didn't know uh, who wrote which poem. We just read all the poems uh, in one document. Uh, and then after we chose the, the winning poems, um, then Jane finally told us uh, who wrote which poem. And it was so exciting for us also to find out uh, who all of you were. So thank you for your beautiful poems. Um, and not just beautiful poems, I want to also say thank you for your very strong poems. Um, these are poems that I think represent um, what so many people uh, don't see um, among our migrant community, um, which is that sense of being able to care for yourself and for each other, um, that sense of being um, able to, to look uh, difficulty and darkness in the eye and to say I am stronger. Um, and that's something that has that always moves me very much uh, when, uh, you know, when we hang out and when we talk. Um, and something that I think this, this whole competition celebrates. Um, I also want to say thank you to the, our colleagues from Singapore Red Cross, um, who are not uh, in this Zoom call this afternoon, um, but they have very much played a part in setting up the whole uh, competition um, and also bringing us uh, together as organizers. Uh, so thank you very much also to our friends from the Red Cross. Um, so I've been asked to read one poem as well of my own. Uh, it's not as good as all these prize-winning poems, um, but I hope it's something that I can share with you. Um, it's a poem that, like many of your poems, is also about COVID-19. Um, specifically, it is a poem about vaccination. Now, if all of you remember, about maybe one year ago, nobody uh, had been vaccinated yet. And all of us, I think we heard about the vaccinations, but we were uh, so worried. Um, is this a, a new vaccination, something that can be trusted, uh, something that is safe, uh, something that I can get and get for my elderly relatives and my children and my family? Uh, of course, one year later, um, most of us are vaccinated and um, uh, it's keeping us safe today. But in those first few months, um, it was something that we weren't sure about. And yet, um, the first few people who went for vaccinations, our healthcare workers and our essential workers, um, they took a leap of courage, right? And they went down to get vaccinated. Um, even though nobody knew what the side effects were, um, they, they did it to protect themselves as well as each other. Um, and that sense of courage was something that I wanted to celebrate with this poem. It's a poem about my parents also, because both my parents are healthcare workers. Um, so let me read this poem. It's called The Two Most Bravest Humans. Mother goes first and says it's nothing. Is back on her rounds the morning after. Oh, so much for fear. Her patients don't know what it is that she's done, except it brings her back. Nurses as well, Mondays, Thursdays, and Fridays, with all those boxes of pills. Sometimes no one else comes, so they're all there is, wrapped up in their gloves and gowns, dispensing cheer. Next is father's. And since it hasn't been that long, really, since his own sickness went away, we only pretend not to be worried. But that same week, he's back at it, full swing, his clinic packed, straight through the balmy mornings. At dinner one night, someone says, maybe, well, let's wait and see. Something about how the side effects take months to show. Others nod their heads. Yeah, just so much we don't know. It's still light when I get up to go, but all I can see is the two of them at home, one standing and the other at the kitchen table painting the brown soft strokes of her face, two faces, the two most bravest humans, although they never say so. Thank you. 
uh, that's my poem, The Two Most Bravest Humans. Um, I want to say thank you also to all the very brave uh, poets who have read today, as well as the many brave poets who aren't able to join us today. Um, thank you very much for doing what you do, uh, and this poem is for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Would you like to, do you have any event that you want to plan or? <laughs> uh, not any event for myself that I uh, would like to plug, um, but a little bird told me that um, the migrant writers of Singapore are planning uh, open border storytelling soon, as well as um, the International Migrant Lit Festival at the end of the year. Uh, so I hope uh, you will all go and support these events. Uh, look out on the Migrant Writers of Singapore Facebook page uh, to see what's coming up. Thank you so much, Sir Teo. Thank you for always being with us. We are really honoured to have you. Thank you so much to all our poets for today. You are really, really amazing. All your words, I think, are really very strong. All the poems that you read. And since we still have time, I would like to share one poem also, which is also about COVID-19. It was written, I think, two, uh, a year ago when the COVID has started. COVID-19. They said you were born 2019 at Wuhan, China. You visited and researched every corner of Asia, toured from Europe to America, then voila, you came uninvited. Now the world was shocked and distracted, want to yell for help or cover their whole head, wearing a mask to become a passion friend. I don't understand what's your reason for spreading your plan without hesitation. People carry the process of isolation because of your sad indication. Countries close borders, friends beware each other. Silence echoing in the streets. People's minds tangled in darkness. What's happening was hard to digest. Many lives were already rest and peace. Yet, a lot is still battling against your trust. Just wondering how to solve this test. How to solve. Oh, thank you. Again, thank you so much to all our posts for today. And I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank Singapore Red Cross for collaborating with us on the first poetry writing competition for migrant workers in Singapore. It has been a beautiful experience working with accommodating persons from your team. And a huge thanks to all who participated in the call for submission of poems following the team mental health awareness, to our three judges and to the organizing team. Congratulations to all the winners and we hope that you'll continue raising awareness on mental health through your poetry or any form of writing. And I would like to thank also Singlet Station, Carissa for the technical support. Thank you for always being with us. Stay safe everyone. And are our poets have something to flag or any event that you want to share for us to look forward to? Anyone from our poets, do you have any event that you want to tell our viewers for them to look forward to? How about Julie? Uh, uh, um, just follow uh, all the social media 
social media of Migrant Writers of Singapore in Instagram as www.migrantwritersofsingapore, our also YouTube channel, Migrant Writers of Singapore. And also please look out for Migrant Writers of Singapore for uh, the upcoming event. And thank you so much, Sis Ray. And thank you so much, everyone, for this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You may, you may on your video, Ali. Anyone who can help me to capture the photo of all of us? Because I'm using phone, so it's not really... I don't the phone. Le. Can How about this thing? Do you have any event that you want to plug? Not at the moment. So, yeah. In future, yeah. But not yet. I think... I think Singlet will take the photo for us. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Harissa. Thank you so much. How about this, Olivia? Do you have any event or something? Um, I think this, uh, this coming November 28th, the finals for the... What you call this one? The poor poetry competition, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> the glow. <laughs> oh, yeah, the one. Good for poetry that. competition. With the... Oh, yeah, congratulations. You are one of the shortlisted. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> congratulations to everyone. Okay, we will look forward to it. Congrats and hopefully take the first prize, you know, second winner, <laughs> anyone. But anyway, being in a yeah, being so shortlisted. So is congratulations. A... About Heidi or Dora, would you like to plug something? Dora. Okay. Since I think everybody is okay now. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, thank you for thank you, being thank you. with us. Sweet. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe Good and happy. Good afternoon. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Take care of your mental health. Thank, thank you, Sir Teo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sir Teo. Thank you, Singlet Station. Thank you, Sir Thank you so much. Thank you, Raya.